My name is Jimmy, and I have a story to tell. It's not my story, but I feel it should be told, even if no one believes it. So I went to an open house out in BFE with my dad. When I was looking around in one of the rooms, I found three journals in a closet. From what I read, they belonged to a teenage girl named Melissa. The first two of the three journals were about normal teenage stuff, but the third? The third has some pretty unbelievable and creepy stuff in it. I plan to tell you all the entries in it, and I hope nothing happens to me in doing so. Cryptic, I know. But by the end, hopefully you'll understand why I say that. Entry 1, as it is, since the first page is missing. Dear Shelley, I can't believe my parents moved me here. It's so boring. <sighs> it's certainly no Tucson, that's for sure. Sierra Springs is so tiny that you blink and you miss it. I mean, the front headline of the paper is about frogs. Seriously. Oh, and the house that we were supposed to move into? It's this 1970s trailer with some additions added to it. In the middle of nowhere. At night, you can hear the coyotes running around outside, so we can't let Buck or Cat out. Tomorrow is my first day of school. Maybe I'll make some friends, so this place won't seem so boring. Melissa. Entry 2. Dear Shelley, Okay, so today was both good and weird at the same time. I'd have thought that I would have gone generally unnoticed, which is how I like it, but I guess being the new girl in this sleepy little town is kind of news. I wasn't mobbed or anything, but people looked pretty interested when the teachers announced that I was new to the class. I hate that. I did make a friend in English, though. Her name is Natalie. I can't remember her last name, though. We have the same lunch, so at least I escaped that awkwardness of where to sit and who to sit with. I sat with her and her friends, and they bombarded me with normal questions about myself and what it was like living in a bigger city etc. Then one of them asked me where I lived. I didn't want to say, but I guess it would have eventually come out anyway. I expected to be teased about my trailer, but instead everyone went quiet. Natalie whispered, you live there? That's it. Social life done, is what I was thinking. When no one said anything, I asked, why? Is something wrong? They kind of looked at each other, and then Kendra told me why they were acting so weird. That place is damned or haunted or something. I must have rolled my eyes because she said, No, really. People move in and out of there pretty quick. Then there's what happened back in the 80s. What happened in the 80s? I asked. But the bell rang, and she said she would tell me tomorrow. Great, so not only am I the new girl, I am the girl that lives in that house. On top of all that, the coyotes are out in the yard again. I can hear them, almost on the porch. Melissa. Entry 3. Dear Shelley, this morning my mom was in a rush to get out the door as usual. She told my dad that we'd have to start making sure that the front yard gate was shut because she said the coyotes were getting a little bold as she heard them on the front porch last night. This was kind of a relief, as Kendra's statement yesterday had my imagined going last night. Let's just say I didn't sleep well. My mom told us she loved us and that she would be working a little late. I heard her open the front door and then, and then she screamed. I had never heard her scream like that, ever. My dad and I ran to the front door, and I couldn't believe what I saw. There were dead mice all over the place. They weren't even in one piece. My dad said he'd take care of it, and my mom left for work, muttering, what could do this? I asked my dad the same question, and he said the coyotes must have done it. But that many mice? That many pieces? Anyway, I got ready and I was leaving for school when my dad stopped me and told me he was going to be working late also. Great. At school, things were good and weird again. I started hanging out with Natalie and Kendra between classes. The first thing they asked was if anything weird happened at my house last night. I lied and said nothing happened. I didn't even tell them about the coyotes in the yard. It's bad enough I have to live in a place that inspires fear. Why add to it? 
They had looked a little disappointed, but whatever. The morning was pretty normal. Boring classes, buttloads of homework. At lunch, I discovered that pretty much everyone knows everything about everyone. I guess that's what passes for normal in a small town. After what I guess was the gossip of the day, Kendra asked if I remembered what she said yesterday. As if I could forget my place is damned or whatever. Do you still want to know what happened out there? She asked. I must confess, Shelley, that I didn't. Not after the mice. But I put on my best sarcastic face and rolled my eyes. Sure, what happened in the 80s? Kendra took a deep breath and, in a lowered voice, told me the story. According to my grandma, in the 80s, there was a family that lived at your place. They were a nice family with a little boy and a little girl. Everything was going well for them out there until about two months later. The family started having issues with coyotes coming into their yard. Not really abnormal for that area, but the family's chickens were being killed. One day, a man moved into the trailer next door. He seemed nice and normal, but over the next few weeks, it was apparent something was wrong with him. People would say that he'd talk to himself at work, and a few neighbors that lived out there said he would routinely go and talk to the tree that was part of both his and the family's property. The father of the family noticed the guy would, in the middle of the night, walk to the road sign right next to his place and stand there for about 20 minutes, and then walk back inside. The next thing you know, the family found their chickens on their front porch all butchered. The police said it must have been coyotes, but the man insisted that the gate was closed and that there were no holes in his fence. After that, the family started changing. Neighbors said they argued loudly and violently all the time. Their children would wander around all alone at all hours. One night, the man lost it, walked out to his neighbor who was, once again, staring at the road sign, shoving him and almost begging him to hit him or do something. When the guy got no reaction out of his neighbor, he stormed off to his house. Then things became eerily quiet out there. No arguing, no kids wandering around, no guy going to the street sign, nothing for two days. The man's boss was concerned because he hadn't been to work and hadn't called in, so he called the sheriff to do a wellness check. My grandmother says that after what was found, the sheriff retired and moved out of state. The smell hit him first. It was like a mixture of sewage and rotting meat. He opened the unlocked door and vomited. Putting a rag over his mouth, he searched the place and found nothing until he went into the additional room at the back. There, he found the rotting, dismembered bodies of the mother, father, and two children. The sheriff ran out of there, vomited, and called for backup. The Arizona heat did none of them any favors as they investigated and cleaned up the mess. The poor sheriff then went over to the crazy neighbor's place to ask questions. He stopped as soon as he saw the door open and smelled the smell. Apparently, the crazy neighbor committed suicide and left a note saying, I'm sorry I did this. I can't go on living this way. Pray for me. The guy had killed the family, cut them up, and left them all to rot in the heat. The bell rang, scaring us all, and I looked around to notice a big group of people gathered around to hear the story. So, Shelly, now I'm home alone, freaking myself out writing this down. I forgot to close the gate, but I'm too afraid to go out there. And besides, I hear the coyotes again. Melissa. I guess I should have said at the beginning that Shelley is what Melissa calls her journal. I know these first entries seem dull, but you wouldn't understand the story without them. I'd also like to add that when I first opened the diary to read these to you, I noticed a new entry dated today at the back. It reads, I know you're there, 